Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm John Potter, along with Johnny Pittman. The, re <laughs> the regular season is over for Oklahoma State, <laughs> and for the first time in 26 years, the Cowboys are regular season champions. Uh, they actually share the title with Kansas, uh, but the Cowboys beat Nebraska this past week and lost to Iowa State. But, Coach, the name of the game is to, to win championships. You've done that in your very first year, and, and you need to be congratulated, you and your teammates, and especially the two seniors, John Potter and Johnny Pittman. Well, that's the reason we wore these masks, that's because right. uh, this uh, really is their team. As I've said for quite some time, uh, the rest of us will have another opportunity to win a Big 8 title and to go on to better things perhaps in years to come. But this is their last year, and I'm so thrilled for our entire squad, but most of all for Johnny Pittman and John Potter, two young men that have shown remarkable progress both on the floor and off the court as well. And, and this will be a year that they'll never, never forget. And as I told the squad uh, earlier today, uh, you know, we're not going to be satisfied with just winning the Big 8 title. I'm thrilled for all the people that have supported Oklahoma State basketball for so many years that finally we've uh, broken through, and I hope it isn't another 26 years. <laughs> but uh, I told our team earlier that, you know, let's go to the Big 8 tournament. Uh, let's win three games up there. Uh, let's uh, surpass what... Uh, most people thought it couldn't happen. Right. And we've already done that, I guess. Mm -hmm. But uh, then on to the NCAA tournament. There's always a tendency when you get to this point that uh, you're a little, uh, you get a little uh, complacent. And this is what you work for. This is what right. a basketball team works for. To get to this point in the season, uh, some people would say, well, from now on, it's all dessert. But uh, we want that dessert. We want to go into the Big 8 this week and, and uh, try to win that thing. It's uh, only been done once before by our school. And that was in 1983, and one of my assistant coaches was on that basketball team, Bill Self. All right. Could be a lot of basketball left for John Potter and Johnny Pittman. Uh, we'll show you highlights of the last week of the regular season. You stay with us as the Eddie Sutton Show continues. This past Wednesday, Oklahoma State played host to the 15th ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. It was an emotional night because this was the final home game for two seniors, John Potter and Johnny Pittman. Coach, both those fellows finished in double figures and you beat Nebraska 80 to 69. We honored the uh, seniors uh, before the ball game. That was Cecil Potter, uh, John's father walking out with him. Uh, Mike Simpson, his mother had preceded uh, John and his father. And here comes uh, Johnny Pittman and his uh, son Dexter who walked out with him and it was a very emotional evening it always is senior evening uh, because uh, you want to honor these young guys but at the same time you know this is the last time we're all going to be together in our ballpark and uh, there's a lot of emotion there our team played very well we knew we had to win this ball game to have a chance to, to win the big eight and uh, I thought we, we, we responded in a very positive manner great pass from Sean into Johnny Pittman and he dunked it Good ball movement. Back to Darwin. He hits a, a three-point uh, shot. Uh, for the night, uh, we were we hit the trades pretty good. Five out of twelve. There you see Sean uh, on a pass over to John Potter, and he hit a three-pointer. There's a good shot of the young guns, our outstanding spirit group. Now it's Sean's turn to hit it. Turn to hit a three-pointer. Nothing but net. Had five people in double figures. Uh, in this ball game, uh, Potter had 11, Pittman had 12, Byron got in foul trouble, only had 13 points, had 10 rebounds, Alexander had 16, and Sean had 11. That ball almost got away from uh, Pittman, <laughs> but he uh, hung in there. Early in the year, <laughs> his hands it. would not have been able to control that, but that's why uh, I think everyone's amazed at what he's been able to do, and it's because of hard work on his part. Great position by Byron, good pass from Sean. For the easy shot. Nebraska is a very, very good basketball team. Uh, they'll be in the opposite bracket from us this week in Kansas City, and they will be playing uh, the first night. Uh, they're in the same bracket with Kansas. Kansas plays Colorado, and they play the University of Oklahoma. Take another look at now, this. Is where Rich King, uh, Nebraska's fine center, ends up with a broken nose. You can see Johnny Pitt when he goes up to dunk. Mm. His left hand comes across. The face, that's called incidental contact. But Dr. Cooper, uh -huh. our team physician, set his nose at halftime and he came back and 
played very well for Nebraska and led their ball club with 18 points. That play, there's a shot of the Terminator, which is the story <laughs> I told last week, and that's Corey Williams' nickname. We ran a play there just before that, what we call a curl double, uh, and there's a three by uh, Sean, where we double screened for a man coming across the lane. It happened to be Byron, and he converted. Here it comes again, same play. He Wide works open. once, try it again. You bet. Good pass, entry pass by <clears throat> Sean to, to Byron. There you see, uh, take another look at it. No one around. Byron slams home two more. We shot 50% for the, for the game, and again, our defense held the opponent to 42% uh, percent shooting and forced them into 17 turnovers. Great play by Cornell Hatcher. Uh, stole the ball from Hayes and uh, laid it up. Take another look at it here. Crowd went crazy when uh, this was a, a very, very big it. play because Nebraska had some momentum at this point. He just took it away from him and uh, went the, in, knocked it uh, down, and also got fouled on the play. Cornell didn't score that many points, but he had four steals and three assists. Played a very solid defensive game. Here's one of the assists coming up right here, I believe, to John Potter. There's a good bounce pass. Looks like Michael Jordan flying through the air there. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that was a great, John, that was a great dunk, a uh, great pass, but uh, he came down that baseline and he was sailing. Good pass by Cornell off to Darwin. He drives in, gets fouled, focuses in on the basket and uh, didn't let the foul uh, bother him. And you can see at this point, we sense that mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have an undefeated uh, home record for the first time in a long while. Cornell Hatcher off to, to Darwin again. And you can see he gets hit pretty good but his concentration is such that he's able to hit the basket. Darwin doesn't uh, show that much emotion, but he did this evening. And here goes Corey on a breakaway, and Corey's gonna dunk it. You can see he's doing a little <laughs> dance there. A happy yeah. group of uh, young men that have represented Oklahoma State in a very classy manner all season, and those people helped us go undefeated at home. The crowd played the part of the six man all year long, and uh, that is so important in college basketball. And you see John Potter coming out for the last time. We'll miss John and Johnny. And Oklahoma State wins at 80 to 69, 14 and 0 at home. Coach, what was going through your mind coming down the stretch of that ball game, knowing you had the ball game won? still have a chance to win the Big 8 championship and you feel all the emotion in that arena that night? Well, I think I went through a lot of uh, emotion in a lot of different ways. Uh, once we knew we, we had the game, then I was thrilled for the two seniors. I was thrilled for our entire ball club. I was thrilled for Oklahoma State because uh, uh, I feel like that uh, Basketball has not been what maybe uh, all of the great fans that have followed Oklahoma State basketball for so many years, and all of a sudden it was here. Uh, we've taken a giant step forward in uh, bringing this program back. Uh, we're not there yet, but uh, uh, we've made more progress than what I even thought could happen in the first year. And I know all the people that love Oklahoma State as I do, uh, we're very, very happy. And I was happy at that moment. <laughs> and uh, I guess we ought to explain these things. Well, because, that, oh, that's uh, right. They were given out the other night uh, at our last ball game, and I think uh, all of the student body had a great time putting these masks on, and we've had a lot of fun with them all uh, ever since then. And, the, and there's information on the back, and, and what, what made it uh, you know, kind of fun was there's, there's information on the back, kind of a biographical sketch of, of each player. So you, you were seeing these throughout the arena all night, and I know that for, for uh, John Potter and Johnny Pittman, it had to be a great feeling for them, quite a tribute to both those young men. Well, that's true. They've uh, talked about it quite often, and uh, they're, in fact, I think they each have a whole box of these that they're going to hand out as souvenirs <laughs> right. as, the rest of the spring. Well, I, I have to bring mine back home, so I, I'll give it to you, granddaughter number one. Okay, uh, this past Saturday, the, the Cowboys finished out the regular season on the road at Iowa State. A ball game, uh, ha had a chance to win another ball game on the road, but uh, couldn't quite finish it off, and Iowa State upset the Cowboys 68-67. It was senior night for Iowa State, and they have four outstanding seniors, and uh, we knew they were going to come to play, and they did. We had our opportunity to win the ball game and just didn't quite finish it off. We led for almost the entire contest till right at the end. Nice pass by Sean, and uh, Byron Houston comes down the middle and, and slams it home. 
This is uh, during the spurt when we jumped out on them. I think uh, we led uh, after this uh, series 37 to 23. They outscored us nine to one just before halftime. We went to intermission with a six point lead. Darwin scores for. That was Oklahoma his only State. basket of the game. In fact, his only shot. Uh, their defense silenced him uh, uh, a pretty good way, and that was one of the reasons we were beaten. We didn't get as much play out of our guards scoring-wise from Corey or Darwin. Sean had a good night. He had 18 points. There's one of his uh, three-point shots. We didn't shoot the ball uh, quite as well as we have. We shot 49%. We were three out of seven from three-point range. Fast break here. Sean for another three. About 14,000, making a lot of noise in uh, Hilton Coliseum. Beautiful facility, and there'd been a lot of talk about uh, possible ride, but they certainly behave themselves in a class manner. And no problems, except uh, the guys in the white shirts out <laughs> there, and they made it tough on us. It's a nice play by John. Yeah, we'll take another look at this. Uh, of course, the crowd thought that uh, Johnny had moved his pivot foot, but uh, no, that's what you call nice a draw through, and he just he kept his uh, left foot planted with his uh, tall body. He was able to stretch underneath the basket and lay it up. Now we're in the second half. We got a little uh, passive here late in the second half, and uh, not to take anything away from Iowa State, there's a remarkable play. The strength that uh, Byron Houston has, uh, this is a, a good shot. Look at this. He gets fouled hard. Ball comes out, and yet he's still able to retrieve the ball while in midair and, and put it in the basket. Two points and also a free free shot. Nice defensive play there by Sean and, and uh, Byron. And Byron knocks the ball forward, and Sean lays it up. As you mentioned, this is the second half, and most of the time uh, we had an eight to ten point lead. And then right at the end, we made some mistakes, and they hit some baskets, and uh, the crowd got into the game, and uh, we weren't able to... Uh, hold off the uh, the rally by the Cyclones. We missed some shots like that. Byron gets it and puts it back. Good put back and again uh, he's fouled on the play. Coach applauds that effort. And Iowa State made a run there at the end and kind of coming down to the final hoop of the uh, the game. Sean gets it. One point shy, we lose 68 to 67. Defensively, we didn't play as well. We allowed them to shoot 53%, and when you allow a team to shoot over 50%, you are asking for problems. Okay, so after that ball game, Oklahoma State uh, kind of sits and waits as Kansas and Nebraska uh, played on Sunday. Let's take a look at all the results from uh, this past weekend. Uh, Kansas State beating Oklahoma in overtime, 101 to 98. <laughs> Excuse me, Missouri over Colorado, 76-51. And then on Sunday in Lincoln, Nebraska uh, beat Kansas 85-75. So here's the way the, the final regular season looks. Oklahoma State and Kansas uh, tie for first place. Uh, but you, you might explain, Coach, why you're going to be the number one seed uh, in the Big 8 tournament. Well, there's a whole formula, and I'm not going to get into that. But uh, we split with Kansas. That's the first thing they look at. And then the next thing, how did you come out with a third place team? Kansas split. We swept the series with the Cornhuskers. That gives us the number one seeding. We'll play Kansas State Friday afternoon at 220, the team that finished in the cellar. But believe me, they're the best cellar team in America. Yeah. There's no team who finished last in their league that is as good as Kansas State. Well, how do you feel about it? And we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the pairings. Excuse me. We'll take a look at the pairings uh, for the Big 8 tournament a little later on in the show. How do you feel about that tournament being played in Kansas City? You've got Kansas, K-State, and Missouri. Well, Geographically, it's located probably better for all the schools involved. Hopefully, one of these days, maybe we can get it down to Oklahoma City or Tulsa and uh, be able to host it. But right now, they've done a, an outstanding job from what everyone has told me. Uh, there's no doubt that Missouri, Kansas, uh, K-State possibly, uh, they have an advantage of having more fans there. But this is going to be the best tournament, in oh. my opinion, that maybe the Big Eight's ever, ever hosted from the standpoint that uh, anyone can win it. Uh, we know three teams are going to go to the NCAA, uh, Nebraska, Kansas, and ourselves. But it's the only ticket for Kansas State or Oklahoma or Colorado or Iowa State. They must win the Big 8 tournament in order to uh, get into the big, uh, big show. Uh, Missouri, uh, they're ineligible, so right. this is their NCAA tournament. So you're going to see mm -hmm. eight ball clubs throw out the records. Everyone going into uh, the Big 8 tourney this Friday, 
They're all zero and zero, and it'll be a great game, uh, a series of games for all the fans that are there. Oh. Uh, and we're just going to go up there with one idea. <laughs> hey, let's beat Kansas State, then let's worry about Iowa State or Missouri, which would be our next opponent. Right, and it's uh, one of the toughest tickets in town, I guarantee you. It's a great event. We'll talk more about the, the Big 8 tournament coming up a little later on in the show. When we come back, we're going to hear from the first lady of Cowboy basketball. You stay with us as the Eddie Sutton Show continues right after this. This has been a tremendously satisfying year for Oklahoma State basketball, a Big 8 championship, 21 victories, a trip to the NCAA tournament are just a few of the highlights. All Cowboy fans can take great pride in this season, but it has been especially gratifying for one lady who has a vested interest in this Cowboy basketball program. When Coach Sutton was named head coach at Oklahoma State, it was a great day for the Cowboy basketball program because it meant two Oklahoma State graduates would be returning home. Patsy Sutton was most pleased the head coach was coming back to their alma mater. I think I first thought of the time that we were in school and I used to watch Mrs. Iba sit behind Mr. Iba at every game and I thought how wonderful it would be if Eddie would someday uh, reach that kind of pinnacle uh, in his career where he would be back here and uh, we would be involved with Oklahoma State. Secondly, I think, and this has been real important to me, uh, it has given me an opportunity to get acquainted with my family. Mrs. Sutton watches the games with mixed emotions. She used to be concerned about how her husband was doing, but that focus has changed. With Sean playing, my first thought is, is for him because he is the most competitive person I have ever known. And he doesn't lose easily. He doesn't even make a, a minor error easily. So I feel for him. She also feels for her husband. He shows a tremendous amount of compassion for his players. And he shows them that he cares about them. And uh, I think that is, is really important. Not just how they play. But, but how they progress. It has been a great year for Cowboy basketball and the Sutton family, and the future looks even brighter. We want to thank Ms. Sutton for allowing us to come in there to the booth and, uh, and visit with her and uh, shoot some pictures from there. Uh, nice lady, Coach. We enjoyed visiting with Super her. Super lady. She's been with me for over 30 years, and uh, we were uh, sweethearts in college, and uh, she <laughs> has been beside me all the way, and uh, believe me, she's... Uh, help carve this career that I have and uh, we share uh, in everything. Uh, she mentioned family. That's how we treat all of our players and uh, I think that's my responsibility uh, to help them mature on the basketball court but to help them uh, prepare themselves for what lies ahead when they leave Oklahoma State University. I'm uh, very pleased and honored to have all these guys because boy it's been fun this year. Uh, she mentioned her family. Uh, Getting to know them, well, for all these years, uh, very, very seldom do we get back here, maybe right. at Christmas time, maybe in the summer. And her mother and dad live here, uh, Ray and Natalie Wright. Uh, she's got a brother, Gary, who is a cattle buyer in this area. And then, of course, her sister, Shirley, is married to Tommy Chesbro, uh, one of our coaches and administrators over at uh, OSU. He used to be the wrestling coach. So this has been fun for her. So uh, it, it, I want to you know, take this opportunity to really try to tell all of our fans how much I appreciate them, but I want them to know how much I appreciate my staff. Uh, head coaches too often get all the credit, assistants aren't given enough, and I have three wonderful uh, men that uh, helped make this happen. Uh, Bill Self, of course, who played here, uh, Rob Evans, who came here this year from Texas Tech, and Russ Pennell, who uh, I've known for a long time. Three guys that all be destined one day to head their own programs. And then Mary Lee Draper, who is a Stillwater girl, is my secretary, and she too has, <laughs> has helped a great deal. And then I guess you could name all the people there at Oklahoma State within the athletic department because they've been so supportive and, and, and they've helped make it happen too. So we are a family. All right. And a lot of basketball left for the family. We'll take a look at the Big 8 pairings as the Eddie Sutton Show continues in just a moment.
The season continues for the Big 8 champions this weekend in Kansas City. Let's take a look at the bracket. Missouri and Iowa State will play game number one. Then Oklahoma State will play Kansas State about 2.30 Friday afternoon, followed by Kansas and Colorado, Nebraska and Oklahoma later that night. Then on Saturday in the semifinals, Oklahoma State would get the winner of the Missouri-Iowa State game. Kansas, Colorado, Nebraska, and Oklahoma in the other bracket, and then the championship game at 1 o'clock on Sunday. So what do you do now, real quick, before you go to Kansas City? We work hard uh, early in the week. Midweek, we taper off. We bus up uh, Thursday morning. We check in the hotel. We have one hour to work out in Kemper, get a good dinner that evening, and get ready to play the Wildcats. All right. Win that tournament and go on to the NCAA tournament. We're out of time. Thanks for being with us for Eddie Sutton at Oklahoma State University. I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody. The Eddie Sutton Show.